All right, well, after that last live, somebody called me and told me the whole thing broadcast sideways. So it's kind of embarrassing, I'm sorry. And if anybody had tried to watch it and suffer through that, uh, you definitely have my apology. Uh, it might be easier if I just redid the live and uh, went over the points in the last one that got missed because of the unfortunate mix-up with the equipment. And you know that happens all the time. I've seen people do it like actual professional news people using their iPhone. Uh, broadcast sideways that happened once here in Pittsburgh and it, unlike you guys at least I had the courtesy to text the woman that she was broadcasting sideways and she uh, eventually fixed it so I'm here to talk about the public charge rule and, and that's been the news lately a lot of people are very concerned about the Trump administration through USCIS uh, redefining or adding new um, benchmarks to what a public charge is Let's talk about the public charge rule in the first place. When someone is or has a number of enumerated characteristics, they are what call, what immigration law calls inadmissible to the United States. Okay, so if you have some horrible communicable disease, uh, you're not going to be allowed in the United States. You're going to have to. Uh, you're, you're, uh, I mean, you can go get it cured and demonstrate to the satisfaction of an immigration surgeon that you're cured, and then you can get in. That would be but you'd be inadmissible as long as you had it and were contagious. Uh, there are about eight grounds for inadmissibility. If you're a criminal, if you're a terrorist, if you plan, plan to practice polygamy or overthrow the country, um, if you've already been thrown out of the country, the, the, the deported, um, if you've lied to immigration authorities. But the one we're gonna talk about today is the public charge ground for inadmissibility. So what the Trump administration did is identified the fact, well, what is public charge? Let's start with that. Public charge is someone who can't survive in the United States without uh, assistance from the government. There are people in the world who, who just, you know, for whatever reason, uh, can't make it in the world without government help. Um, plenty of Americans can't make it through the world without government help. But these are people applying to be admitted to the United States, and uh, the, the, the stance has always been that if you're likely to not be able to survive here without us giving you benefits, uh, you're inadmissible. So the new rules define that in a much more clear sense. Most people who get into the United States in the first place have found a way to overcome um, any finding of public charge. For the, for the most part, that's easy. They're sponsored. If you're coming as a spouse, the citizen spouse has proven their ability to support you, so you, that would overcome any suggestion that you might be a public charge. If you're coming on a work visa, you've got an employer sponsoring you, and for the same reason, we can expect that you'll be employed and be making money. Um, this applies more to people who are already in the country and are already using benefits. Now, let's, let me go over the definition. So they say any individual who receives one or more designated public benefits for more than 12 months in the aggregate with any 36 months period. And by aggregate, they mean if you're using two programs for the period of one month each, like a, a total one month, but they're on two programs, that counts as two of the 12 months that you can do in any 36 months period. And there are specific programs that were identified as the specific public benefits programs that are covered by this. Not all public benefits could make you a public charge. Uh, Supplemental security income, temporary assistance to needy families, supplemental nutritional assistance program, or SNAP, uh, most Medicaid and even certain housing benefits would qualify as public benefits that would count against you in a public charge determination. And there are certain people who are excluded from this, uh, even though they are using the benefits. Obviously, a lot of my work involves humanitarian immigration, refugees, asylees, Victims of trafficking, um, victims of violent crime, those people, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, they're, they're excluded. If they use public benefits, it's not counted against them. Also excluded are members of the U.S. military or ready reserve, their dependents, um, victims of domestic violence, uh, uh, children under 21, alien children under 21, and pregnant women, of course, for obvious reasons, aren't counted. We want them to be able to get the food and things they need. So those are the specific programs that this applies to and the specific people who uh, actually get a break and are excluded from the public charge determination. 
Uh, another thing to think about is that this is proactive, at least so far what I've read, proactive in its reach. So if you or someone you know is a non-citizen in the country that has used public benefits in the past, you don't have to go back and check. They're not going to make you inadmissible. It doesn't come into effect until 12 a.m. on October 15th, 2019. Uh, and at that point, that's when they'd start counting these. Uh, and what's the effect? Did they throw you out of the country? Well, no. Um, what they do is they say that uh, when you become the public charge, but going over that 12 months aggregate use of those enumerated programs by someone who's a non-citizen and is not in an excluded category, you can no longer extend or change your category in the country. So if you were here as a student and you were using a lot of for example, SNAP benefits. Maybe you had a kid with you. The Well, first place, it wouldn't be counted against the kid. It would only be counted against you. You'd be the recipient. Uh, for two reasons. One, the kid didn't get it. And two, the kid is under 21, and that's an excluded person. But um, when you, you know, you're using these benefits in a, in a non-immigrant class, the B class student, uh, or I'm sorry, the F, students are F class, you wouldn't be able to extend your visa. You wouldn't be able to change to another category of visa. You would, that, that would be it. And then, of course, when those visas expire, you'd have to leave or be accruing on local time. If you tried to get back in the country after that, you would still have that public charge determination uh, preventing you from getting back in. Now, there are breaks for people who, of course, life, life circumstances change. People can get themselves straight. Um, if you were to be determined a public charge and leave the United States, you would be inadmissible. You couldn't come back um, unless you could overcome that public charge determination. And you could do that, for example, by uh, having a sponsor. And if, you, if there was an American here that had demonstrated enough income to take care of you and themselves, well, you'd no longer be a public charge because you'd have a source of support other than the public, your spouse. Uh, employment visa could overcome it. And for people who can't get any of those, the service has discretionary authority to let you post uh, an immigration bond to overcome the public charge determination. Now, they don't have to let you do it at all. If they do, the minimum is an $8,100 bond, but they have discretion in the amount too, so they can set the amount and they can even say, you're not allowed to do it at all. But those are some of the outs. Uh, again, it's important to remember, uh, it doesn't apply to those enumerated categories. I'll go over them again, refugees, asylees, T and U visa holders, victims of domestic violence applying under VAWA, the Vic Violence Against Women Act, active duty and ready reserve military, their dependents, international adoptees, um, Medicaid for alien children under 21 doesn't count. And again, by aliens, they mean non-citizens in the country. They, they don't mean people from outer space. And uh, of course, pregnant women. The programs are SSI, TINF, SNAP, Medicaid and some housing benefits doesn't go into effect. And they don't even start counting the time until October 15th, 2019. So those are the guidelines for it. Um, this, this was suggested quite a long time ago. I mean, this, this, this new rulemaking um, started uh, being proposed rulemaking. It's final rulemaking now, but it started being proposed rulemaking, I think in 2018. And they took in thousands and thousands of uh, public comments that informed the uh, creation of the rule and really reflect a lot of concerns of Americans and even to the extent that uh, a lot of uh, things and, and blind spots that the service may not have noticed like for example what about children what about pregnant women and that was taken into account so it's a lot less mean-spirited than it could have been uh, had it been enacted in its original form and uh, let's see, that, that, that was put, uh, it was released on Monday, this Monday, August 12th, 2019, to take effect in 60 days, October 15th, 2019. Now, some of this stuff is curious to aliens in the country. Obviously, some people are, um, there's, there's no desire to put anyone out or make anyone feel embarrassed. Obviously, if any of you have questions about this, my name is Joe Murphy. I'm a lawyer with Allegheny Immigration Group in Pittsburgh. I deal in primarily humanitarian and family-based immigration cases. Our phone number is 412-586-4131. You can call me and talk to me. You can leave a message for me uh, here on Facebook, even a private message if you are so inclined. 
and that might be the case. This is sensitive stuff. People have pride, and there's no need to embarrass anyone. But if you have any questions at all about whether the receipt of public benefits might make you or a loved one inadmissible, and what that means in your case, please feel free to contact me. I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate. I really enjoy my immigration practice, and I'm, I'm always happy to talk uh, to people about it. And, and if I can help them, obviously that's my job.